in so many years and is, is as outstanding in so many ways as is Mo Howard, who was the leader and the orchestrator and the big brother of the Three Stooges. Well, it's a pleasure to have you with us. That was a very wonderful word, Bob. Coming from you, I believe. Appreciate that. I think most people would want to know, other than the, the, you know, the basic questions, who were the brothers and how many Curleys, and we will get to them. But most people would want to know how the Three Stooges shtick, the the peculiar uh, uh, bits of, you know, twirling somebody's nose and hitting him in the eye. How that all started? Well, it, it started with me alone, and the boys used to say. I think this guy stays awake half the night figuring out ways to punish us. And uh, it just happened. I mean, if they say something I didn't like or did something I didn't like, I'd vary the things. I mean, I'd grab him by the nose or I'd hit him in the stomach or I'd poke him alongside of the eyes. This is slap. off stage or? Oh, no. No, this is right there. Right there. I mean, I never... They never knew which one I was going to use when I used it, you know, in but I, films. I, I'm sorry, I probably phrased the question wrong, though. What? How did you come on to this, you know, unique approach to comedy? Uh, where did it start? I mean, nobody sat down and wrote for you, well, no. Mo will hit Carly and so-and-so. When did you discover it? Was it in a card game? or? Well, uh, the poking in the eye was discovered in the card game playing contract bridge. Larry claimed he had four honors when he only had three. Shem proved to him that he had, and Larry still insisted that he had four. So Shem threw his fingers and, like this, uh, <laughs> here I am here. I want more money for this. Uh. <laughs> well, Shem poked him in the eye. His fingers went about, oh, about a half inch deep right into Larry's eyeballs. Uh-huh. And Larry must have been thrilled. Oh, sure. He, there was tears falling out of his eyes for a, for a week. And uh, I, it struck me so funny that I leaned back within the chair and went right through a glass window. The door. Right. Through that glass window. And the next, uh, the next matinee at the Paramount Theater in Los Angeles, we were, we were working there. Doing a, a kind of regular yes, vaudeville. Yes, a personal appearance is what right. we called it. And uh, there was one line in the, in the act where I said, now... Who was the manager of this act? And they both came from two different sides and both said simultaneously, I am. As he said that, I reached both hands like that, see? Like this, even. Right. And the audience laughed real loud and, and long. Right. And I said, boy, that stays in. As many other things. Now, if they said something uh, that was didn't sound right to me, I just let one fly. I didn't know whether it was a smack or a crack on the forehead like this, you know, one of those mm-hmm. things. <clears throat> Got any aspirin? And, uh, <laughs> or another show? <laughs> <laughs> so I say, there was ne- it wasn't planned. Like sitting down and say, look, when you say this, I'm going to hit you with this. Or so No, no. I just did it when I felt like doing it and when I felt that they deserved it. They got it. Shemp, you and... Larry. Larry were the original with the three. originals. Then Shemp... In 1932, got the opportunity to play the character Nobby in the Joe Paluca pictures on the coast. And and Champ is was your brother. My older brother. Right. Yes. Uh, he was two years older than I. Uh, so he uh, was concerned about who we were going to use for a third party. So I said, "Don't worry, Champ. This is your opportunity. You go ahead. We'll get the kid brother Curly." And Curly was my younger brother by five and a half years. So we did. We called for Curly, who had been working with someone else, and he came in and joined. And the funny part of it was that, you know, Shemp had uh, hair parted in the middle long on the side, and he always used to push it back like that. Larry had wild hair. So when Curly came in, I tried to figure out how could Curly wear his hair that would be funny. He said, don't worry about it. I'll be back in a half hour. And he did. Oh, and he had a wax mustache originally, you see, and beautiful brown wavy hair. Half hour later, he comes back with a cap and the mustache, takes his hat off. He was as bald as a cue ball. And I said, that's wonderful. <laughs> right, and you hit him one. <laughs> no, not at that point. <laughs> he was hit bad enough with that haircut. You said he was a bad study when we were talking oh, yes. earlier. Hard study, Hard not study. bad study. Hard right. study. Yes, he... Uh, this is Curly we're talking about. Yes, Curly. So that uh, whenever we were doing a scene and uh, he forgot any of the lines, instead of quitting... 
he would go into some kind of an action. On occasion, he'd fall to the floor and spin around like a top until right. he remembered what he had to say, or he'd do a backward kick step sure. like this. Some, sometimes they had to cut the film because he did that so long, he could, he could add a feature film of him going backwards, you see. <laughs> he never could remember. <laughs> so, that's a hard study. That's a hard study. And, well, how about uh, when he would go, whoop, 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 I feel like a fool, but he wouldn't well, go, he, whoo, just whoo, the same whoo. as I did things that I felt were right to do, smack, poke, thing. Right. Well, his element, he could probably break me in half with his strength, you know. But the extent of his uh, thing was, or like that, right. or bounce his hand up and down in front of my head, and I would go like that, and then he'd go, boom, like that. And for that, he'd get a bang, bing, bang, all around, see that, hit the hand on top of right. that. Once he did it with a cigar in his hand that was lit. <laughs> to see that, they hit his hand. The cigar went around, hit him on the head, and the sparks flew all over the place. <laughs> in the middle of his head. I laugh at this. Yeah, I'm sure you laughed. You were always hitting them. Yeah, and the funny part of it was when people used to talk, talk to us, they used to ask the other boys. Uh, uh, no, they used to ask me, how does it feel? Does it hurt uh, when they get hit? <laughs> and Larry said... <laughs> Who are you asking? They <laughs> ask us. You never did get hit. They never got oh, you back. In the films, I really got beat up. One picture of fixing the electric works in the in the kitchen of this place, uh -huh. and uh, they were on the, in another room, pulling a wire, which I had the bell in my hand. They pulled my hand through. Right. Then this went up and back from one room to the other. Finally, I tied it around my hand like oh, that. Oh, I do remember that. Yeah, and they gave a pull, and I went head first right through the wall. And they had a big beam up there. It was a balsa beam, you know, eight by eight. Right. Came right down the back of my head, see? They didn't know about that. It was loose up there. Then... Uh, but by the way, were the hits, the bings, the bangs, were they real? I mean, were you oh, really... Oh, yes, them? every one of them. Real good and hard. <laughs> and we... Uh, <laughs> How did you get along off stage? Did you like... Very well. Of, you were never letting your aggressions out or anything? Never. Well, don't the hit me again. The only time I got real mad was when... My partner, Larry, missed the show. They forgot to give him a call at the hotel, wake him up. Okay, were the hits stronger next show? It was. In that case, it wasn't a hit in the belly. It was a smack across the kisser. And what was his reaction? He came into the theater backstage, and he didn't realize. So with the stagehand, the electrician on the board says, Hey, Larry, you're on. He says, How am I doing? He was clowning. Yeah, right. <laughs> then he saw us out there, see, and he came out. He says, You know what happened to me? He said to me. I said, no, but I know what's going to happen to you right now. And I gave him a welt. <laughs> you know, and about a half hour later, you can still see a little five red fingers on his face. You made up a lot of your stuff as you went along in the pictures, which was yes. unheard of yeah, in the was... late days of films when you guys were still very popular. In the early days with silence and all, they did make them up as oh, they went yeah, along. Sure. But I mean, when you guys were still well, big it... stars, you were still ad-libbing as you went along. Well, there's a Q word. You couldn't do that, you know, uh, consistently. There was a Q word. If one of the boys would say, now, wait a minute, that was a Q that he had thought of something funny right there rather than talk over anyone. And if it wasn't funny, he got a double poke Give him a little shot. Got a crack on the skull besides. <laughs> so that if he didn't get the laugh, the action would. So it, didn't, it never stopped. Right. How many pictures did you make in all? <clears throat> well, short pictures. We made five at MGM. And uh, 200 at Columbia Pictures, where we had a 24-year straight contract. And then we did five features at MGM, and we did about 10 features at Columbia. Now, you were a, an actor, a single actor, dramatic and comedy, before the act got together. What year did oh, you yes. make your first picture? Well, the first film I was in was in 1908. 1908. At the Vitagraph Studio in Brooklyn with Maurice Costello and names that nobody can remember now, but they were stars. John Bunny and Flora Finch, Florence Tyner, Lillian Walker, Earl Williams. Well, you're right about that, Mo. Yeah. I can't remember those. But they were stars yeah. of their day. Yeah. And uh, then we made, I made... Uh, Flora Finch, maybe, but that's... Flora Finch and John Bunny were pissed. She was a well, right. skinny one, and he was a big fat fella. Right. Anyhow... Uh, made uh, six two-reel sports comedies with old Honus Wagner, the Pittsburgh Pirate shortstop. The, ma the amazing part of this is, as we were sitting here before we went on, we had gone through already two or three stooges uh, on the air, two or three of the uh, the shorties, and Mo, in the middle of conversations, everybody's asking him questions, would hear a cue line 
from Curly or somebody, and he'd turn around and do his line. Huh. He'd say, well, you'll take that, yeah. And then he'd come back and talk to you. Yeah, so he, you remember all of those lines. Yes. Now, I have to tell you a cute thing. You know, my wife wrote one of the one of the very excellent stories that we did called Hoi Polloi. That was the tail end of that picture is when my kid brother Curly had a stroke. But she used to come like uh, 2 o'clock in the morning. She would nudge me and say, Honey, I think this would be very funny for one of your scenes. I said, Well, well why, why are we whispering? She says, I don't want to wake you up. <laughs> this kind of thing, you know, and this doesn't just only happen once. This is a kind of a consistent routine. Mrs. Howard is in the studio with us, by the way, today. May yes. I ask how old you are now, Mo? I don't have to answer. You may oh, ask. No, oh, I will. I will. <laughs> Gladly. On June the 19th of this year, I will be 76. Okay. Well, you're... The spirit of 76. You are the spirit of 76. How do you stay so young and vivacious? And, I mean, I know you're now, making... Vivacious has a bad connotation. Now, you have to watch that. Uh, my wife doesn't like those kind of words. <laughs> no, I, uh... I don't know. I don't know. I gave up smoking a long time ago, which I wish everybody else would do. With uh, deep apologies to the tobacco companies. And uh, I keep in action all the time. Mm -hmm. You've never really retired. Oh, no, that's a real dirty word, retired. Who were some of the big stars who started their careers or who appeared as bit players in Three Stooges films? Lucille Ball started with us. She was in uh, one of our comedies called Three Little Pigskins. She was a gun mall in the picture. And then there was Walter Brennan, who was in two films with us, he started with us. One was called Restless Nights, and the other one was called the first comedy we made at Columbia. It was a musical short in rhyme called Woman Haters. A musical short in, in rhyme. rhyme? Yes. That I, was I'm very not... difficult, but well, we did it. The whole, the whole picture yes. was in rhyme? Yes. It was written by a very fine uh, songwriter called Archie Gottler, who has since passed away, and he directed the picture. Very well done. Right. And uh, then there was this fellow, I can't ever think of his name. He was in Sahara, a picture called Sahara, with uh, J. Carol Nash, a young fellow. He was an Olympic man. Uh, yeah, I can never think of his name either. Honey, well. do you remember it, honey? Mrs. Howard? <laughs> okay. I'm having trouble remembering my name. Yeah, we both had the same kind of a thing there. No, they keep calling me Mr. Howard. Half the time, I don't know who they're talking. Too. We're getting time cues, so I want to be oh, sure to... I mean, we're not out of time, not but... Getting that, are we? No, no. Uh, we're doing real well. I but uh, I want to be sure and tell everybody that you'll be appearing live at the John Budd Walt Whitman Theater, which is in Pensacola, New Jersey, uh, this Saturday and Sunday. Two shows in the afternoon, both days, 12 noon and 2 p.m. And, of course, there'll be cartoons and uh, Three Stooges films and so forth for the kids. And one evening show each night. What time is the evening show? Do you know? Anybody? 7.15. One evening show. Saturday Can I ask so you something? Sure. You got time? Sure. Uh, what's the name of that handsome fellow out there with a the little mustache? Handsome fellow out there? Paul Conti. Paul Conti. I did want to say hello to Paul Jr. and Jeffrey. Uh, because they're buddies of mine and quite some nice fans, and I appreciate it very much. Okay, Paul Jr.? <laughs> okay. I don't think you know how many fans you have, by the way. I mean, our mail on the Stooges is just unbelievable. I I'm sure it's it it's five times anything else on the station, and it's not strictly uh, youngsters. It's nice As you know, it's, uh, there's a big college following. You yes. do college concerts, don't you? Yes. Is that what you call them, concerts? Well, I don't I call them appearances. I yeah. I just tell him I, I'm used to working with a fellow on each side of me, and if there's anybody would like to offer their services, they can come up here. <laughs> they don't come. Well, suppose uh, I had uh, offered to come up. All right, I'll give you two lines to say. Okay. Uh, for instance, I do a gag with you uh, with three wristwatches. Right. And uh, you would say, what's the idea of uh, wearing three wristwatches? Say it. What's the idea of wearing three wristwatches? Well, that's how I tell the time. You say, how do you tell the time? How do you tell the time? Well, it's very simple. You see, the one on this end runs 10 minutes slow every four hours. The one on this end runs 20 minutes fast every six hours. The one in the middle is broken. It stopped at 2 o'clock. <laughs> well, you say, how, did you t how do you tell the time? Well, then how do you tell the time? Well, I take the 10 minutes on this end, 
and divide it by the 20 minutes on this end. No, I'm sorry. I take the 10 minutes on this end and subtract it from the 20 minutes on this end and divide by the two in the middle. And you say, what time is it now? What time is it now? <laughs> 7 45. <laughs> I missed that last cue. Do we have to go? We have another minute? What's your favorite Three Stooges film? All time. What's, what's the best that you and the other fellows consider? I can, only, I can only give my consideration of witches, and there are three. One where I played Hitler in You Nasty Spy, the other one called Slippery Silks, and the other one was called Microphonies. Well, we're having a Three Stooges Festival on May the 27th uh, at 8.30 in the evening. That's a Sunday night. Right, Sunday night, May 27th. We start at 8.30. We're going to try and include those if we can. Mo, I want to thank you very, very much it's been for a coming pleasure, and visiting with us nice today. To I know it's been a great thrill for everybody out there, and it has for me. Thank it really you. has, because you are... Very kind. I don't there's patronizing or anything. You are a legend, and uh, in your own way a comedic genius and, and it's a it great pleasure. feel very us. fine and I did want to say if I had forgotten to say it before Philadelphia has been exceptionally kind to the Three Stooges over the many years. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. You've got a hell of a nice crew too. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to get back to a film or a commercial now.